Hi, I'm Courtney at womenlivingwell.org, home of Good Morning Girls, and we are reading through the Bible cover to cover, just one chapter a day. And so this week we're in the book of 1 Samuel, chapters 11 through 15. Now my kids and I, we love going to this pizza buffet. It's called CC's Pizza. I don't know if you have one in your hometown. But one of the things that we love about it is that each of us can get the type of pizza that we enjoy. So I really love veggie pizza. My son likes the typical pizza that kids like. He just likes plain pepperoni pizza. And my daughter doesn't like red sauce, which is kind of a problem So when it comes to pizza. So she likes that they serve like an Alfredo uh, pizza with like a white sauce on it. So that's what she picks. And then for dessert, if you've been there, they have these awesome cinnamon rolls, and so we all love that. So it's a lot of fun because we can pick and choose what we like, and that's what we love about it. Well, I have found that in the church, some of us treat the Bible like it's a buffet. We pick and choose what parts of it we like, and what parts we're going to obey, and what parts we're not going to obey. And so... For some of us, we really like to hear the stories of God's love, but we don't really enjoy His wrath. Or maybe you're really into studying prophecy and the book of Revelation, but you don't really enjoy doctrinal books like the book of Romans. Or uh, maybe you really prefer the New Testament, and you're not so much enjoying the Old Testament. Well, in our story today, we're going to see that Saul treats God's words and his command like it's a buffet. Like he can pick and choose what he's going to obey, and we are going to see that there are consequences for him doing that. So in 1 Samuel chapter 15, we get to verse 3, God gives him a very clear command. He says to Saul, Now go and strike Amalek and devote to destruction all that they have. So God says to, to destroy them all. And all means all here, but in case Saul doesn't understand what all means, then he defines it. God says, do not spare them, but kill both man and woman, child and infant, ox and sheep, camel and donkey. God gets very specific, but then we get bound down to verse 9, and God has given them victory, and we find that they did not obey. It says, but Saul... And the people spared Agag, and the best of the sheep, and the best of the oxen, and the fattened calves, and the lambs, and all that was good. Everything that looked good to them, they were like, we can't let this go. This is good stuff, right? Don't we sometimes in our lives find that there are things that they just feel good. We just really enjoy them. And yet we know in our heart that, you know, maybe that TV show we watch really is full of sin or a certain song that we enjoy or there's just other sins in our lives that we really enjoy and we don't want to let go even though we know that it is not good. Well, this is exactly what Saul was doing here. And so we get to verse 13 and he said, he goes up to Samuel and he says, I did what God commanded. And Samuel questions him and says, wait a minute. No, no, you did it. He's like, I can hear the sheep and the oxen in the background. He's like, I have evidence. And Saul is sort of like our kids when they're caught red-handed. What does he do? He blames the people. He says, well, it's the people. It's the people who did it. And then he makes up a story and he says, um, it's so that they can make sacrifices to God. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And just like our kids sometimes are like us, he shifts the blame. He minimizes and he rationalizes and he comes up with excuses rather than taking responsibility and, and repenting of his sin. And so Saul uh, Samuel says to him, but you are the king of Israel. He says, but you are responsible. God made you the king. You know, as leaders in our church or if you're a leader in your home, I'm all, if you're a parent, our kids are following us. We are responsible. If we compromise in our lives, they will follow our lead. The pastors in our church are responsible for their church. Bosses are responsible for their employees. We cannot shift the blame to them. Leaders are responsible. And so the most important verse in this chapter, verse 22, Samuel says, it's the theme. He says, to obey is better than sacrifice. He says, you can make up this whole story about, oh, I'm going to just sacrifice it to God. But he says, God doesn't want your sacrifices. He wants you to obey. And anyways, what is it that they gave to God? They just, anything that was worthless and wasn't any good, that's what they destroyed. You know, sometimes we can feel like we're sacrificing, like maybe we clean out our closets and so we donate something to charity and we're like, we feel good because we donated a charity, but what we gave up 
probably wasn't very good anyways. It was our old stuff that really maybe they did us a favor, right? By cleaning out our closets for us or our cupboards. And so that's not what God's looking for, just for us to give up the things that are easy to give up. Or maybe you put $20 in the offering plate on Christmas Eve and you feel good about that. But maybe God wanted you to give 100 Maybe God wanted more and you aren't living in obedience. We don't want to just give up the things that are not good. Maybe he wants us to buy new things for others. Well, in the story, Saul was willing to put to death all the things that weren't good. And so, but he says he wanted to sacrifice those good things. But we turn to Psalm 50, verses 10 to 12. I like this because we hear what God thinks of our sacrifices. He says, for every beast of the forest is mine, the cattle on a thousand hills. I know all the birds of the hills and all that move in the field is mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world and its fullness are mine. Do you hear God, what he's saying? He's saying, mine, mine, mine. Everything in this world is mine anyways. When we sacrifice, when we give back to him, it was his anyways. And so it is not our sacrifices that God is looking for. It is our be obedience. Give him your heart. Give him your mind. Give him the words of your mouth. Surrender your life. That is what God wants. Jesus says, if you said, if you love me, you will keep my commands. The Bible is not a buffet. We do not get to pick and choose which things we will obey and which things we will ignore and rebel against. But we see that Saul decided to rebel, and there was a consequence. Samuel told him, he said, today, your kingdom is going to be stripped from you. Your throne is no longer yours. And then at the end of this chapter, we see Saul goes home, and Samuel goes home, and their towns are only just five miles apart, but the Bible tells us that they never saw each other again, and that Samuel was grieved. He wanted so much more for Saul. He wanted so much for the leader of Israel to obey God. And so his heart was grieved, but God moved on rather quickly to the next man because we are going to look next week at chapter 16. Right away, Samuel is anointing David now as a new king. And Saul is going to have to deal with that jealousy of knowing that he, that he lost his kingdom. And so we're going to see that in future weeks. But my question for you today is, what in your life is God asking you to give up? It might feel like it's a good thing. But if it's disobedient to God, if it is sin, it is not good. And that joy that you think you're getting from that good thing will be greater when you give it to God and you confess that sin. Your joy will be greater from walking in obedience. God honors our obedience and he gives us more joy, more hope, more life when we honor him. You know, if you watched my last week's video, I talked about letting go of our baggage I talked about letting go of our burdens and our trials and our sorrows and our wounds and laying them at Jesus' feet so we could walk freely. That is not what I'm talking about today. Today I'm talking about laying down your sin. We're talking about the nitty gritty, that stuff you're holding on to in life that you know is wrong, that has you not walking freely. Let's let go of our baggage and let's let go of our sin so that together we can walk freely. God honors our obedience. The Bible is not a buffet. So keep reading God's word and obey every day what you are learning. Keep walking with the King.